schedule here is Bruno Mascott talking about use of nonlinear finite element analysis for bridge evaluation, um, some challenges and perspectives. So. Thank you, Ben. Uh, good morning, everyone. So um, I'd like to acknowledge the work of my two co-authors who did the work and uh, prepared the presentation. That was my share. Uh, what I'm going to talk today is about the use of nonlinear finite element analysis and bridge evaluation. And I will follow this uh, outline here in the scope of strength assessment structural strength as assessment of structures. So the, the use of nonlinear finite element analysis can contribute uh, for the design and assessment of concrete structure. It's been used uh, in some cases, but I get more and more people are using it. So it has to be done in a good way. And what, what nonlinear finite element brings you is to a, a more realistic understanding of the structure's behavior. So uh, and uh, in service and at ultimate conditions. And in some cases, uh, it could also contribute to uh, increase the load rating because, uh, and we've seen that uh, earlier today in the, uh, the first uh, part, that sometimes the load distribution at ultimate is quite different than the one you would have in elastic analysis that you use for service uh, uh, load level as prescribed by codes. Uh, however, codes, the way uh, the, the load factors and resistance factors are derived, uh, they're calibrated, they're, it's used in the uh, uh, reliability framework, but in, in the, the case where the load, uh, the, yeah, the load factors and material factors are uh, different, they are, they are separated, and in many cases, and mo actually most cases, uh, they have been calibrated on simple elements. Uh, sim sim and it's the way codes have been calibrated. So the, we get load uh, strength on beams in, in the labs, and we have the elastic load distribution, and these things do not really uh, represent the reality on actual bridges. Since they were calibrated on a single element, assuming uh, usually a linear elastic distribution of loads, uh, they cannot be used directly if you do uh, nonlinear finite element analysis for load rating. They could be used, but it's not meant to be used in that uh, in that format. So, the uh, to use, uh, however, to use nonlinear finite element analysis in bridge evaluation, uh, it, it's a big challenge because it's a new way of doing things, and you have to ensure that you, the software is robust. Uh, and is reliable because there are many software and they are not all good. And, um, and also they have to be used properly. So you have to train the engineers to use those. You may have the best software. Uh, it's like driving a Formula One. I'm not sure that everybody could handle that uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So you have to train engineers. So I'm going to focus today on the uh, the, the software side, the nonlinear finite element software. I'll be sure that it's robust and reliable. What we're proposing, actually, when you do a nonlinear analysis of a bridge, let's say it's a three-dimensional bridge, and what you do actually is a it's a pushover analysis. You put your dead load, and then you increase your live load. It's not tra it's not moving load, but it's a fixed. Uh, you have to put loads in your more uh, critical position, and then you do a kind of a pushover analysis that I will show here. If I'm uh, pushing, yeah. So you do pushover analysis. So so you put your dead load up to this level here, and then the lambda here uh, it's the live load increase. So increase that value up to the figure you get using your nonlinear uh, analysis. So this is the way you would do that. And then what we're proposing, it's a, it's a, the, the, the method that we're proposing is to, you do this analysis up to the failure and you compute a global load factor here or, or that, uh, so that will uh, actually reduce your, or should say a strength factors, not just a load factor, but it's a strength factor that includes the variability of your software and the variability of your uh, analysis, so in a rational way. So it's a, what we're proposing here. So to the to this level here, that will be your ultimate load, but factored ultimate uh, load, uh, knowing hope, hopefully that with lambda equal to one being your factored load level you want to reach. So you need a uh, robust um, uh, model must be used, and the all finite element model, the nonlinear and finite element model have errors. Uh, they're not accurate. And so they must, you must know, they must evaluate the, how much error each software, the software you're using is having. So, um, 
they're, they're, and it's not quite common in civil engineering, but in mechanical engineering, they do what they call VNV. It's verification and validation process of all uh, all your uh, your, your uh, whatever analysis you do or method you are using. So on the developer side of the the uh, software developer side, uh, th there you have various ways of doing that. Of course, I won't go to that flow chart, but there are ways that are well pub uh, well described in literature, especially on the mechanical engineering side, how to do that. But also as a user, you must also be sure that. It's a shared responsibility. It's not, you don't buy, just buy a finite element software and, and say, okay, it's good, so I'm going to use it uh, blindly. So you, you have, you have also that responsibility. And there are various, there are various levels of, of checking. So you, this is the level, the material level, okay, this is level one. You have, depending of, so in, in uh, we, I divided that in five levels. So you, you check, be sure that your finite element model, well, the tension force, the compression force, then you will be more here in shear and the more, Complex, you come, the, the bigger are your specimen or element, the lesser you can check your model against. Uh, sorry, so, so this is the, sorry, the developer side that can go up to this point, but the user also have to check the finite element they're using. So just uh, as, a, as an example, you can, the material level could be just sheer like this. This is just an example. Then you go to something that is more complex. This is only concrete. This would be reinforced concrete. Uh, there's a bunch of good tests in Toronto uh, that you can check your model against. This is uh, cantilever. Uh, uh, with, with the, the, this represent the Concord Bridge that we discussed this morning. This is a tunnel um, a section that was tested in Toronto. So the more complex your structure gets, the lesser amount of tests you can uh, check your model against. But that gives you more confidence. The more you, you come, you get more confidence. And this is the bridge test. Like for example, here we tested four bridges uh, that was presented earlier this morning. So the, this is a way to be sure that your finite element, or not to be sure, but to know how good or how bad is your finite element model. How to consider the error of, in your model? So uh, there are various ways to consider our error of the model. The way the approach we selected is to do a lot of tests. A uh, lot, a uh, lot of modeling of tests, but by using only two properties, FC prime and FY. These are the, the engineer's properties they use. So this, so this, we use those and we will pick two models. One that was developed in our university. So by myself and, and a colleague. So it's called APM3D. And we also test use the damage plasticity model, plasticity model that is in Abacus. So I will focus on the EPM3D uh, for this presentation, but uh, just to let you know that you get something like this. So we analyze many specimens. You get an average of your tests uh, to uh, analysis prediction, and you get also this, the uh, standard deviation and the coefficient of variation. So that gives you an idea. This is, for example, EPM3D, which on average, just predicted quite well the 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 the, the, uh, uh, the 60 tests I just mentioned, and with the reasonable coefficient of variation, uh, damage plasticity model uh, under predicted because this is a test over analysis, but with a larger standard deviation. Doesn't matter. It's better if you have a better model, but the the fact is the point is to these two parameters are important if you want to include those in your analysis and strength assessment. And the way we're proposing is to do a, a Rosenblut point estimate method. What you do is you do analysis. You, you have to know the average concrete strength, for example, the average uh, tensile strength of your rebar and the standard deviation of those two properties. So let's say you have these two properties here. If the pointer works, it doesn't. So you have these two properties here. So this is the average of both FC prime and FY. And this is the properties plus and minus one standard deviation. So actually you do two to the power n plus one analysis, nonlinear analysis. So if you have two parameters, this is typical of concrete structure, you would do five nonlinear analysis. You would do these five pushover analysis. And then you get the dispersion of your uh, modeling. And so then you can combine those. So you need, when you compute the global load factor, you need the bias factor and the coefficient of variation of your analysis. One is the, your error model here, V sub E, and V sub R is your four analysis that you did. So that gives you the dispersion of your specific problem analysis. So you get something like this. So then you can compute gamma sub G here, which will be 
a value that will be larger than one. Delta E is usually larger than one. And with a positive sign here, you will get some uh, a factor here that will be 1.2, 1.5, whatever. And you will, from your average strength here, computed using your this pushover analysis here, so divided by gamma G here, you will find your uh, analysis or, or your the strength, the, the factored strength of your structural element. So it's following the same rational as people use to derive the phi factor, all, all the factors that we have in, in our design codes, but using nonlinear analysis. And so an example, how you, we do that in, in Canada. In Canada, we pick, if I just go back to this equation, you need your beta here. Beta is your reliability index. So it's based on statistics. And when you do, we do bridge evaluation in Quebec, in Canada, sorry, in Quebec too, but in Canada as well. Um, it's, um, same place. Um, uh, just uh, so we pick the beta value and from three parameters, system behavior, element behavior, and inspection level. Uh, inspection level being, is it inspectable or not inspectable? Uh, and then you pick that beta value here, and so you do the analysis. So I'm going to show two examples of, of bridges. And in one case, so we, we, this is an example of uh, an analysis. We were looking for the flexural strength of a simply supported bridge here. And uh, we did these five analysis so you can see here so what are these two analysis here you know this is with the uh, the fy this is the yield strength of your steel uh, plus one standard deviation and this is for concrete with uh, plus one the fc prime plus one standard deviation and fc prime minus one standard deviation so you can see that here you get more global f uh, uh, ductile failure here and if you use a reduced strength of your concrete, then you end up with a shear failure. Okay. And you do that here for the lower as well. So, so we did that. We did this, this pushover analysis. We computed the, the gamma here and your, our R sub R here, which is your computed strength, uh, came equal larger, was a bit larger than the, uh, the ultimate load you want to carry on this bridge with all the factored live load. So in this case, the, the analysis showed a, a result or capacity of the bridge that is, was larger than what you, do, you would have computed using the, the usual load rating factor method using the elastic redistribution that you would uh, use. Another case, it's uh, a solid slab bridge that has about four uh, foot deep bridge with a skew angle. And here you can see the, this is the Canadian loading uh, for bridges and, and so you can see that it's, it's a three lane bridge. So you can see all the, the, the most critical location of the, of the track on the bridge as, as shown here. This is a bridge with a skew. And we know in a, in a skewed bridge that the, in the obtuse corner here, the shear would be higher. And if you would do a linear analysis model and linear analysis strength evaluation, you would find out that the shear in this bridge is okay. So we did the analysis using this and and at some point, actually, what we add, and I will just, uh, the, the slide is not at the right place, but we got a shear failure here in this corner. And so it's what we, so five pushover analysis at load factor that were higher than the desired load that we wanted to reach. However, when you apply, you compute your, your load, uh, your lambda sub g that accounts for the uncertainty, the dispersion of your results here and the dispersion of the, or the accuracy of the, of your, of the finite element model, then we ended up with a load factor that is lower than the desired load factor. So in this case, we could carry only 75% of the, uh, the, the the live load that we applied on the bridge according to the safety level you would like to reach on this bridge. And uh, so this bridge, the, uh, the uh, conventional load uh, evaluation would have given an FR value, a load factor that would be larger than a rating factor that would be larger than one. Whereas the pushover analysis with the method we uh, are proposing gave uh, a lower value because, and this is related, why? Because it's, a, it's related to a shear failure. It's a punching shear, or not, it's a shear failure, not a punching shear, but it's a shear failure in the uh, up to corner. So we can see here the inclined shear, okay, thanks, uh, that we got for uh, this in this case. So in conclusion, good timing. So uh, nonlinear finite element analysis for design and assessment of structure, uh, it's a, it's a, 
could be a good approach. It's well, uh, well carried out. Uh, it gives you highly valuable uh, understanding of the bridge behavior. So, and, and, uh, and I think it's the, the value of it actually is what you learn when you do these, uh, the, these analysis on how the bridge behave. Uh, the, uh, whether each model has to be validated and not promoting one model uh, against another is that the users must have a very good understanding on how to use their model. Uh, in, in one case, it helped increase the, in, to increase the load rating. It was not the objective. It was just uh, academic work that we did. But the, we, we came to a load rating that was higher than what you would have got using the conventional load rating uh, method. However, for the second case, it captured a failure mechanism that had not been identified using usual uh, assessment method. So, so it's where when it becomes very valuable in my mind. So I'd like to acknowledge the uh, those who supported that work, and I'm open to any question. Thank you.